Hey, Margaret, I found some slides about gas laws. So I don't know what they're doing in your class, but I just thought I would share these with you to see if they made any sense. Um, I always tell my students that moles had to be invented so that we can count things that are too small. So you can see that right there. Why are moles invented? Because it allows things to be counted by weighing them. But what if you can't weigh something? Like if you have gas molecules, what are you going to do? Well, we have to use something like ratios. So here's a couple things to keep in mind. The balloons on the left are filled with about equal amounts of gas at the same temperature. One yellow balloon contains helium, a low density gas, and the other contains air, which is relatively higher. Notice that the volumes are about the same, but the helium is a lot, those atoms are a lot lighter, so their density is a lot less. Notice also involving balloons that if you had a balloon in which you were able to heat, you can see the flame in there, if you could heat the air in it, that's going to make the balloon expand and therefore it has a lower density. So um, gases obviously are different from liquids and solids. They are easily squeezed or inflated uh, depending on what you change the conditions. One of those conditions can be temperature. If you cool gases or heat gases, they can really, really change their volumes. Gases flow freely, like pumping air into a tire. Lots of lots of gas molecules flow through the um, rubber hose. Um, gas densities are a lot lower than solids and liquids because there's lots of empty space between the molecules. And if you mix gases, they're basically going to just fill the container in the same proportion anywhere. So the oxygen in a room doesn't like all glom up to the ceiling or go to the floor. Um, here's what I meant before when I said about um, lots of empty space. I'm circling these molecules and there's plenty of empty space in between them, but you can't do that in a liquid or a solid because basically the atoms or molecules are touching. This happens to be three pictures of bromine in the solid, liquid, and gas phases. Um, whoops, I don't know why that equation got messed up. But when we talk about gases having pressure, it has to do basically with molecules bumping into things with a certain force. So if you know the force of the molecules over an area, that's what we call pressure. So um, it says atmospheric pressure decreases with altitude. There are more molecules close to the surface of the Earth than there are up at the highest mountains. So that essentially is because gravity pulls on uh, gas molecules just like it pulls on you. So there's a lot more gas molecules lower in space than there is way up in space. Um, this demonstrates that pressure, although you can't see gas molecules, is pretty strong. If you vacuumed out all the air out of this metal can, the pressure from all the gas molecules around it crushed the can. Um, this is another way to observe pressure, is to measure it using a barometer. So this is a quantitative way to measure or observe pressure. Notice that if I took a glass tube, as you see here, filled it with mercury, and then inverted it into a pool of mercury, and then let go, you would see that there would be a height of mercury that's basically balanced by the height of the whole atmosphere. Um, several miles high of air um, is equivalent to the mercury's height. And basically, you could kind of think of it like a teeter-totter. On an average day at sea level, the height of the mercury is about 700 and mil, uh, 760 millimeters, so it's not even one meter tall. But several miles of air has about the same force pushing downward. Um, when weather changes, you could change the 760 a little bit, but usually it's within just a few percentage higher. Barometers, barometer is um, what this is measuring. It measures the atmosphere. Um, manometers, so rather than whoop, pressure, manometers, uh, manometers can measure the pressure of gases that are trapped inside this flask. So let's say, for example, you did an experiment and it produced some bubbles and you trapped the bubbles inside this. You could figure out what the pressure is of that gas, in this case, by measuring the difference in the height of the mercury. So basically you have a battle here between the orange gas is battling this difference in height. And so if you know what that height is, let's just make up that it's 20 millimeters of mercury 
then you know the pressure of the gas is 20 millimeters of mercury because they're basically pushing down. Now notice that this is closed end, so there's no molecules in here that are having anything to do with the pushing down. Basically you have a teeter-totter again, and you have the orange gas is sort of battling against the mercury, and basically it evens out when 20 millimeters of mercury is on one side and the gas is on the other side. If it was higher pressure of gas, well then it would push this mercury even higher. But right now let's just call that 20 millimeters mercury. Now if I had an open end manometer, you have to include, let's say, the atmospheric pressure that day. So if the atmospheric pressure was 760 on this day, you would say that the teeter-totter is the pressure of the gas plus, let's say, 20, let's say what this is, is equal to the 760 that's pushing down. So that would mean that the pressure of the gas on my left-hand picture would be 740. On the other hand, if I had this manometer that's open air to 760 uh, millimeters of mercury, is equivalent, um, the pressure of the gas is going to be higher than it was in the first picture because this pressure of the gas is going to be one side of the teeter-totter and the other side of the teeter-totter is going to be the 20 millimeters of mercury plus the 760 from the atmosphere and so this pressure of the gas is going to be equal to 780. So this is higher pressure gas than this is. Just because we like to drive students crazy we use different units, that's not really true. Chemists use atmospheres a lot they use millimeters of mercury a lot. Sometimes engineers use pounds per square inch or bar or pascals. But for the most part, chemistry classes use these. Um, the ideal gas law makes a big assumption that the gas molecules have no attractions and no repulsions. They're basically like the ping-pong balls in the lottery machine when they um, do the power ball. And the ping-pong balls are just bouncing around like crazy. And they don't attract each other, they don't repel each other. And the ideal gas law works pretty good in that situation. So for normal circumstances, like the air that we breathe, um, the values that you get are basically about 99% of true. The P stands for pressure, V is volume, N is moles, R is a constant, and T is temperature in Kelvin. Don't forget that. So you learn temperature units. You have to do these gas laws in Kelvin. Um, one little thing about the R, the 0.08206 that people use most of the time requires the pressure and volume to be liters in the atmospheres. It requires the temperature to be Kelvin, and of course N is moles. Um, you could rearrange this. Um, when I did PV equals NRT, notice that moles is equal to the mass, and the capital M here is the molar mass. So you could rearrange this guy so that PV equals NRT gets converted into, i kind of do this here, I guess it's what they did on the side and I'm not really being helpful, but if you put the mass over the volume, um, that's going to be equal to the pressure times the molar mass over RT. And if you have a mass over a volume, that's what we call the density. So the density is going to go up if you increase the pressure. The density is going to go, uh, let's see, down if you increase the temperature. If you make it hotter, then the gas will expand and the density goes down. If you make the gas cooler, then that means the density is going to go up. If you make the pressure go down, then that's going to make the density go down. Here's a real problem. Find the density of CO2 and the number of molecules in a liter. At STP, that means 273 K in one atmosphere. If you plug in all the numbers, you get a density of 1.96 grams per liter. Notice that the units cancel. Um, you could convert that to molecules. If you take the grams, convert to moles, and then use the Avogadro's number to get molecules. So here we have uh, 273 in one atmosphere pressure. Oh, it was the same density went down. Molecules. Uh, what does it say? Per. Um, let's see. You could change the conditions and get a different value. 
What if we make the temperature warmer and the atmosphere? So we just made it warmer. Notice that the, and, uh, the total number of the number of molecules of liter also went down. And I probably just made you dizzy with all. Yeah, the number of, whoops, sorry. Um, you could also rearrange this and get the molar mass as we did on the previous slide. And this problem, you could write this down on when you have time, or you could pause me to try it out and calculate a molar mass of 84.4. Anyway, this was just some slides I had, so you can have fun with them. Bye-bye.